All right, David Harry here. Now, sometimes do you think to yourself, is it just me? As in, you've seen something, but other people don't seem to be talking about it. Right, what it is recently, I've been doing a ton of stuff with my new ZV-1, and I was noticing the fact that things were getting a bit blearier towards the edge of the screen. And I was looking at it carefully thinking, that shouldn't be the case because my other Sony camera here, which is an AX100, doesn't do that. Anyways, it started getting me thinking. So what I've done, I did some testing with some stills and then I thought, oh, I, I, I can see exactly what the problem is now. So what I'm gonna do in this video is show you a bunch of stuff that I've come across, which is basically how Sony are using like a warped picture coming off the back of the lens system onto the sensor and then inside the camera they do a whole load of like recorrection of geometry and stuff now all of this lens distortion and geometry stuff goes on for the best part in the background so what happens is the camera will actually be doing a ton of stuff with inside itself that you are completely unaware of however if you look at the raw images in stills mode and you actually view them without any filtering applied to them you can see exactly what's going on with the original distorted image that goes onto the sensor for which afterwards the camera then does various things to create the JPEG version which has got its coloration and also its basic correction as well to the geometry and then furthermore to that whatever it is doing in video mode as well to get its video picture sorted anyways what I'm going to do is go through some stuff with you now and show you very clearly some of the stuff that's going on with the camera and obviously what it is having to do to process well process a ton of stuff actually to do with color but also massively to do with geometry from the original picture that comes into the camera now this is going to be very long and wordy it has to be because I have to explain a ton of stuff that's going on here however there will be chapter markers and stuff in the timeline also some links and whatnot chapter links in the, des the, the description to the video so yeah use them if you want to but like I say wordy it's going to drag on a bit but it has to in order to show this issue and exactly what is causing it okay so what we are looking at here then is the timeline for my nle so what this is going to allow us to do is to just flick through a few things fairly quickly so we can see stuff a little clearer so what i've got here are a bunch of assets there are some jpegs some raw files and some video files from the zv1 now the first thing that i'm going to show you are three sets of stills so these are stills where there's a jpeg version and a raw version and of course the jpeg and the raw in this instance are taken from the same exposure so this is the exact same picture but we will see exactly what the camera is seeing in raw mode and then what it does to give us the JPEG output so I'll do these three things first just so we can start getting an idea of what these differences are now if we have a look here this picture that's in the middle of the screen up here what this is this is a 3-2 version of the picture so when I go full screen there will be black bars at the sides but don't worry about that that's just so I can show you the full size of the picture I will then go into crop versions to show something in a second so let me just go full screen here so what we're looking at here is the raw version of one of the pictures. Now, if you have a look on the top here, what we can see is a bevel up there and then a bevel round here. So bend and a bend and then a slight bend down the bottom here. Because don't forget, these bends get worse towards the edge of the screen as opposed to the center for the way that this is working. So right now, what we are seeing is the exact picture that comes out of the back of the lens. So this is exactly what the sensor sees. Now, watch this. What we are now looking at is the corrected JPEG version. And we can see that because everything's all straightened up. So there's no beveling or bending on these edges on this monitor. So everything is all nice and straight. But let me just go back to the raw version there. Now, look at this. There's a ton of like, you know, beveling and bending or warping or distortion going on. But on top of that, there's also a fair bit more picture towards the left and the right. So if you have a look on the left here, 
there's a cable down the side here on this computer and then on the right hand side we can see like a flower there or part of a flower a flower pattern there all this flower pattern running down the wall now watch what happens when i go to the jpeg all of those flowers go missing at the side and all that cabling goes missing down that side is on the left as well so basically what we're seeing there is the fact that you know once the camera starts processing the raw image it's throwing a ton of picture and image away in order for it to be able to get like you know a straight geometry coming out the back end now let me go to another still here so this still here is just another thing from the computer now on this side we can see a grill clearly down the left on here then on the right hand side we can see these two screws off this bracket system that holds the drive in place now watch what happens when i go to the jpeg here it completely straightens it up but we lose the entire grill off the left and we lose all those screw holes off the side on the right there so let me just flip between them a bit so raw jpeg raw jpeg as you can see there there's a lot of information that goes missing once it does the correction and stuff okay so i'm just going to go to another image here and this one here is a still from a computer screen so i've basically just pointed the camera at a computer screen and just like randomly shot something off the screen now as we can see here this is the raw version of a something because we can see that mad bend going down the side there so here's the jpeg version of it now which is all nice and straight and all the rest of it so let's go back to the raw version back to the jpeg version now looking at the raw version here it says up here Fortnite, and then it's got a big m there now watch this when i switch over to the jpeg it's look how much of the text it's chopped off on the end there <laughs> and also down here as well we'll see this where it says and and save ios boom look at that tons of it taken off also the, there's a bunch of stuff on the left here which may not be so clear but a whole bit of the left is going missing there as well <laughs> okay so what we've seen so far then are three stills with variations in raw and jpeg and we can quite clearly see that in the raw mode there is a lot more picture that the camera is actually recorded but we don't get to see that that's because there is a lot of processing and a lot of like changing of the geometry within the camera in order to give us a straight picture should we say or something which is rectilinear so none of this kind of warped picture and stuff like that now what i'm going to do is just come over here to another picture now this one's going to be a little bit better for us because we're going to finally see exactly how this affects the video output so right now what we're seeing here is just a picture of a top down shot or one of my rostrum shots as i call them and this one is the raw version so it's just me filming this keyboard and this becomes very clear in a second as to like what's going on because you have to remember the reason why i started going down this particular rabbit hole is because i was convinced that i was seeing like blaring going towards the edges of the frame when i was looking at like you know sharp stuff on the zv1 so right now this is a still and this is the raw version now that's the jpeg version and as you can see there, that'll show us exactly how much beveling or how much kind of like lens distortion is going on, barreling and stuff on that version. Then the JPEG kind of straightens it all up. Now, as we can see there, this has got black bars on the side because once again, we are looking at the 3-2 image so that we are in with keeping with whatever it is that the raw version is being like recorded at or shot at. Now what I'm going to do is come down here and what we've got here is the exact same images that we've just seen but this time what i've done i've just fitted these to fill the entire 16.9 frame to its width so the only thing we're doing here is chopping stuff off from the bottom to crop in but we are not altering the width of the original picture so right now that is the jpeg version and then that's the raw version and we can still see look you know the stuff on the table up here which i'd inadvertently caught in the shot which goes missing on the jpeg version but is there on the raw version so we can clearly see there between the jpeg and the raw there is definitely stuff going missing off the screen and there is a ton of recorrection going on now here is the bit which i think is definitely gonna like show up the issue that i've been talking about so here's the raw version and right now 
this is a video still so this is exactly what the what the camera is shown as in video mode so if i just come back here as we can see down here i'll just play it that's a video yeah so we're just seeing the first part of that video file so let me come back up here so once again there's the raw there's the video now immediately there there's a problem we are not seeing the entire the entire width of what's going on we're losing a ton of width to get to there so when people have been going on about like yeah there's no way that this is a 24 mil equivalent well it definitely isn't and i don't know are sony telling us that that's the 24 mil version in which case when we see that we're definitely not seeing the 24 mil equivalent because if it's the raw version or if it's the actual sensor version that sony is saying is the 24 mil equivalent then yet they're not lying if that's the one that they're saying is 24 mil equivalent but by the time we get our video out the back end it's going to look exactly like that okay now just remember i've locked off the camera here to do these shots so nothing's changed from that to that other than the fact that the camera will process like mad one to get all the geometry done and then all the color and whatever processing to get to this part here that we're looking at now for the video shot now check this out this is the bit where it's definitely confirmed to me that what i thought of seeing i definitely did see now I've blown in here to the center of the picture, right? So this is a video still, blown into the center. And as we can see, to all intents and purposes, that's all quite sharp and stuff. It might be a little less sharp at the other end when you're watching it, because I'm doing this in 4K. You need to really look at it in full screen, full res, in order to see the, the resolution correctly. But nonetheless, I'm going to show you something now which will translate regardless of how you're watching this back. So right now, that's the center of the picture. Now I'm going to show you the extreme left of the picture. Now look at this. As we can see here, as we are getting further to the left of the frame, all of this stuff starts getting blurrier. So all of these letters and down to here where it says tab and caps lock, they're getting blurrier. So watch this. There's the center. So there's no blurring around the edges. And then once we get over here to the hard left, there's blurring. Now watch this. Here's the hard right, exactly the same thing. The further towards the right we get, we start seeing more and more of this aberration and blaring going on. It's a lot clearer to see it with this because this is white on black. So once again, hard left, and then there's the center. And to all intents and purposes, the center is dead sharp. Now, I'm not entirely sure what is causing this, but it is some form of aberration. Now, this could be something to do with the optical system, or it could even be something to do with the way that the Sony has to de-warp the picture. And in that de-warp process, it is just kind of smudging stuff towards the edges because this hard left version and this hard right version have definitely got some smudging and stuff or aberration or whatever's causing it going on with all of this stuff here. But when we go back to the center, that's all fine. Okay, so hopefully then this video has kind of shown what it was that I thought that I'd seen, which I obviously had done, which was the sharpness dropping off towards the edge of the frame on the ZV-1 in video mode. Because the thing is here, some people may be looking at this and going, but hold on, Dave, I don't, I don't shoot stills and I most certainly don't shoot raw. So obviously this doesn't affect me. Well, actually it does, as I've clearly shown there. And that's because in raw mode, we are seeing exactly what the camera is really recording. What you and I see on the video output is a corrected version with inside the camera. And obviously in order to make that correction, you've seen how much of that picture gets lost from the sides. You've seen how much de-warping has to go on in order to make that rectilinear video output appear the way that it does to you and I. Also as well, I would strongly suggest that maybe somewhere along the line where people keep going on saying you know this is meant to be like a 24 mil equivalent at the widest point which is obviously something that i was thinking it should have been as well maybe this is explaining why that isn't the case 
Maybe Sony are measuring that field of view or that focal length. Maybe they're measuring that at the sensor for what they're seeing directly behind the lens and not necessarily what you and I are seeing as far as the processed output in video is concerned. Anyways, the one thing I'd also like to make clear here as well, during these shots, the camera was locked off. Also, I was like triggering it remotely. Uh, there was no stabilizer on obviously for any of this stuff so what we were seeing there was the, like you know the best we could get it the widest we could get it no interference from the stabilizer or anything like that no interference from shake or anything like that so basically as best as you could get all this stuff I'd also for the best part let the camera do the exposure so although some of the shots might have looked a little bit like kind of darkish it was just the camera the way that it was recording them and also as well as far as like you know any of the light and detail was concerned across the screen and all the rest of it once again it was mostly down to what the camera was choosing to do itself and all i'd done was basically set auto focus and then took the picture as soon as the focus was basically saying it was in focus so essentially let the camera do as much of it as possible as what i've done with all these shots here and nonetheless whether it was manual focus or not what we are seeing is that in the exact same plane things are drifting towards the edges now whatever is doing that i'm not entirely sure i've probably i would lean more towards once it's doing that correction for whatever it has to do with the bend in the picture as it's getting further away towards the edges it's just not the tolerance isn't as good as what it will be closer to the center and i think that's what we're seeing it could well even be issues within the lens itself do you know what i mean could be some kind of like you know aberrational stuff to do with the lens also and quite possibly this is maybe the main cause of it it's the way that sony are doing this compression decompression system in order to maximize the field of view or the focal length or the, or the shortest focal length that they can in such a small barrel system for the lens as well so maybe it's all that or combinations of that which is leading to these issues that i've seen now i know most people are going to be sitting there going well i think the picture looks great and all the rest of it and for the best part yes if you're outdoors and you're shooting stuff outdoors where you've got a ton of bokeh in the picture and you're just concentrating on whatever is in the center of the frame yes it's going to look awesome and it does but if you're going to start like doing stuff where you need a nice clean wide shot of say text or like i don't know like could be details on buildings and stuff anything with fine detail in you will definitely start seeing this dropping off of like you know detail towards the edges and whether that's a drop off of resolution or effective resolution due to the compression decompression system going on or the way that they're having to de-warp in camera or whether it is the lens itself or whether it's the sensor doesn't matter it's definitely there anywho i'm going to shoot off now and if you've liked this stuff that i've been doing with the z if you want there'll be a playlist for all this stuff also there'll be some links in the description for all the stuff that i use with the z v1 there'll be more videos to do with the z v1 coming up and all the rest of it anyway if you've liked the video please give it a big thumb thumbs up also consider subscribing to my channel getting all of that bell notification icon system and the last thing that it means for me to say right now is i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now.